Hi, this is Jeff Schlebach with the Kohu Semiconductor Test Group, and today I'd like to share with you another Unison Quick Tip. I hope you find it helpful. When testing microcontrollers, flash memory, or devices with built-in self-test, there are often tests that require waiting on the device to signal or flag that it has completed a certain programmed operation, indicating that we can proceed to the next test. To test for this, we could simply program a worst-case fixed delay time before checking to see if the device is ready, but this can waste valuable test time. Fortunately, Unison provides a feature called Match or Sequential Match, which gives us an ability to detect this condition without wasting critical test time. Before we look at the details of how to implement this in Unison, note that one of the simplest devices to use this technique on is flash memory. These devices will often have a ready busy pin that stays active and remains in that state with no time limit or user intervention. In Unison, the most basic sequential map is defined in what's called a match pattern. An example of that is shown here. It is designed to compare a pin or set of pins against some predetermined state or sequence of states until a match occurs. When a match takes place, we can detect the event and continue with the pattern execution. A match pattern uses a local fail flag turned on using the fail under SEQF pattern micro instruction and a conditional loop that tests the state of this local flag. So let's walk through a simple match pattern example and see how all this works. Starting with vector 1, we see two unison micro instructions. The first, TC under off, disables test cycle count logging. After the match is complete, the test counter is enabled using the TC under on instruction located on vector 10. Since the number of cycles will vary between devices, there is no need to have the system keep track of the number of test counts while waiting on our device to tell us it is ready for us to continue. The second micro instruction, fail under SEQF, disables normal global fail flag detection and enables sequential match or local fail detection starting on the next vector. Fails after this will not contribute to the functional pass-fail result of the pattern and are not logged. After the match is complete or the maximum count is exceeded, the fail under on command restores fail detection and returns the system to its default behavior. This then leads us to the beginning of the conditional loop on vector 3 marked by the C loop A 1000 micro instruction, where 1000 is the loop count in this example. A corresponding CN loop A instruction with a conditional, in this case SEQF, is used to mark the end of the conditional loop. The count specified by the C loop instruction determines the maximum number of times the loop is executed if the test condition is not met. The minimum loop count is 2. Fewer loops are executed if the condition named by the CN loop instruction goes false before 1000 loops in this case have executed. Note that the SEQF conditional is the wired OR of all pin comparators on all sites and will not go false until all comparing pins on all active sites pass. Remember, all sites are running the same pattern and all sites must match to exit the loop. This means that the longest delay will determine the test time for this test. Before performing a test or compare of our ready busy pin on vector 5, we will want to reset the local fail flag SEQF. This is done using the reset flag micro instruction on vector 4, where our flag in this case is the local fail flag SEQF. Due to the high speed operation of the digital subsystem, there is a pipeline delay that must be taken into account. This is the time from the actual occurrence of the failure until it gets to the compare logic and updates the SEQF flag. The number of vector cycles this takes can vary based on the speed of the pattern and which digital instrument is in use. To guarantee this pipeline is correctly handled, use the repeat match pipeline micro instruction as seen on vector 6. This command takes all of these conditions into account and chooses a value that provides the correct amount of delay. And note that when more than one digital instrument type is involved, the system software will pick the largest repeat value required. Finally, if your device doesn't need regular clocking during the pipeline delay, it may be possible to define a minimum length period time set 
to use for the vectors with the repeat match pipeline to minimize the delay. In our example, this is what Timeset TSet2 provides. A few final observations. In this example, we are only looking for a match for a single ready busy pin, vector 5. But your actual match could be across a group of vectors and multiple pins. So if any of the vectors or any pin fails, the sequential flag would be set and the pattern would break out of the loop and continue. Note also that the compare on vector 12 is there to make sure that if the device never matches, we detect this condition and fail the test. Finally, recall that this example works for devices where the match condition stays active with no program interaction or no time limit. But what about devices where the match condition stays active with no program interaction, but where there is a time limit to detect this condition? Or a device where the match condition stays active only with some program intervention, like turning off its clock? Look for quick tips covering these subjects on our Kohu Semiconductor Test Knowledge Center and consider subscribing to our channel today.